Hi everyone and welcome to another episode number 5 to be more specific for the Hitchhiker's Guide to ServiceNow. Today we're going to talk about the multi-row variable sets that came with London. And uh, why does it never work with my PowerPoints like I want to? My name is Jel Van Enquist, aka The Witch Doctor. Uh, been working for the last few years with ServiceNow and mostly every aspect there is, all from technical assignments to health checks to architecture, best practice, you name it. Uh, lobbying around the community, helping out, trying to answer questions and of course learn myself. Got my over there my uh, contact details you just want to hang around talk about service now or anything else just uh, feel free to connect or subscribe to my youtube channel but enough about me what are we going to talk about what is the multi-row variable set how can we configure it and of course can we use it in scripts and so on and a nice shout out to brad who actually made some nice good looking uh, articles on the community about the scripting part. So let's skip that one and let's go into our portal. So what are we looking at? Variable sets. I've been messing around with the catalog item. Since it's in the catalog we are having the different variable sets. So let's find my sales laptop. Basically you create these just like any normal variable sets and I have already set one up but just to show you you just hit new and then you can decide is the normal the old variable set you're going to want or the multi row variable sets. Click on that one, give it a title, give it a, a database name or internal name, of course order and, and the normal stuff and afterwards you will have something that looks like this when you have populated it just to give you a preview i like to look at the catalog through the, the search portal instead but down here you can see this is my cool variable set i can add rows by clicking add and here you can see i have three variables reference field to the user table uh, multiple select choice and some free text as well test for example. So how do we build this thing? It's quite simple. Let's take a look what I have done. Just your normal variables. You have the orders and that's pretty much it. It isn't harder than that. Let's take on this one for example. You can see that they look just like uh, normal variables in a normal variable set or is it loading? I got a, a water can in the way of my uh, browser loading information. As you see, it looks quite similar to the, the normal variable, so I won't go through what you put in the different fields and so on. But the good thing about this one is, like we have seen a lot of customizations to share and so on, I can just add another row. I'll put in someone else, Beth. She has some bloated foot and we don't want to make an extra text on this one as our second row. Just for a reminder later on when we're going to script you're going to see the differences. And let's just hit uh, another bloated foot like that like a big foot. So now you can see you have three rows. You can of course remove a row. You can edit a row as well or remove all of the rows. But we're done, let's... And that's pretty much me just going through uh, showing a, a colleague how to do the translation way. So it should say order now, but at the moment it says uh, Lemlin, which is Swedish. But I'll just check out. This is what's happening when you play around a lot trying to figure out how stuff works and you're showing other people and so on. Uh, I normally crashes my instance and then I just see boot and get it back on track again. So let's see what happened. We'll have our requests number 10 and let's take a look at the requested item and I've taken out the variable sets and now you can see 
this is how it's actually presented for requested item as well. I'm going to take and copy that society. So this is how it looks like from this part, which is a really nice feature. So the next part we're going to look about is how can we use scripts to mess around with this? Because we'll always end up there somehow, sadly. I will ma just made a fixed script to show you the data. So the first thing I will do, I will explain this code and I'll put out the code in my GitHub as well. I'll put in a link later as well where you can actually download and fetch this. But basically we'll put in the requested item CSID in this case. And then I just go in and fetch that record. And then you can see to fetch my multi, <coughs> my multi row variable set. I just go in and say that my multi set variable is this. And just to show you what we get, I'll do it like this. I usually often use the GSD bug just to make sure that my my all my messages isn't saved in the logs, just in my debug screen, which is quite nice. So and here you can see, so we basically get an array of each row as an object. Uh, what is good to notice here is that you can see, and let me do like this, let me get my requested item. Here you can see that Beth didn't have any uh, data in the extra text. And when I do that through scripting, you can see that the extra text variable isn't even in that object with the empty value. It's just not there. Which is quite good to know if you're going to loop through stuff and so on that you might suddenly, if I was looping through the extra text fields, then suddenly it wouldn't match with the rows that I am actually wanted to fetch. So that's quite good to know. Uh, another thing you can do is after I have fetched my multi row variable set into this variable, I can actually just dot like this one and get all that data it's like that. And then you'll see who to curse, which is a reference field to the user table. So we just get a list with the sys IDs of those records, which can also be quite handy if you need to do that. You can, of course, also add new rows into this variable set. And this is basically what you need to do. You use the, the dot add row on my, my multi set. Then you can use it in two ways. Either you can use the dot set cell value, where you specify the, the name of the field and the value you would like to put in. In this case, we had Fred Luddy's one, we're going to curse him. And as you can see, you can not only use the set cell value, you can actually use dot walking like you might have done in other places as well to one. So let's add another row with that curse. And let's <coughs> see how it looks like. Run the fix script. And here you can see now we have it and since we didn't set any extra text that one is empty as well now one thing to know about this one is so we have actually added one row to this request item but if i go back and reload you can see that it hasn't added that and the reason for that is you can only add values into the variable set before the requested item is saved for the first time, inserted into the database. Afterwards, it won't save. So if you need to do stuff like that, you might need to do like a before business rule to actually make this happen. So let's, let's try that one out just to show you. And I'm very prepared this time. So that's uh, <laughs> pretty much since I have a limited time spot to record this video. Uh, I made a business rule. You would probably like to set some conditions so it only runs on that specific item and so on, but at the moment I'll just hit it all. Uh, you can of course 
it item is for example sales laptop because I know that this variable set is only on that one so I only want to run the business rule if that is correct but let's skip that one for now and let's not put in stuff that can break the things that actually work I'll activate it it runs on the request item table before insert and <coughs> A little bit different from the code since I don't need to actually fetch uh, the requested item since that is the current object so I can just dot walk to that one then I'll just add the same code as you can see and you don't have any like dot insert or so just like this and I'll hit save so this one is activated let's go back to our portal Fetch our laptop again. And I'll just add one row for the fun of it. Abraham, you get the angry chicken extra large. I don't know why I was ordering pizza or something like that. So I'll hit the, the order now or uh, Lemlin. Check out. And here we go. Remember, we only had one row but let's go to the requests number 11 and get into the requested item and there you can see here is my scripted row from the business rule and before we end up i'll just going to remember to deactivate that one otherwise it might end up making really strange stuff so before we go just to show you I will put the code in my git code as episode 5 haven't done it yet but when you see this video it will be there as well so take care and I hope this helped you a little bit with the multiple row variable sets and hopefully you can use that out the box instead of the share stuff so see you around <laughs>